Okay, today's video I just wanted to show the difference between like image R differing and light burn adjustments. It's the same photo, one's differed in image R and the other one I took into light burn and done some adjustments. I just wanted to see what the difference between the two is. They're both being sent at a 300 speed and a 25 power. So I'm just going to put them next to each other and see how they come out. And at the end I'll put the two different edits so you can see how it was done. Well that's the two finished. This is Divid in the image R and this was the one that I did on light burn. One thing this one it looks like a bit deeper like the eye and stuff is a little bit more. I just wanted to show this one's pretty flat as you can see. That one has got a little bit more depth see like the eye. don't know if that's a good thing. Yeah, let me know in the comments which one you think looks better image are dithered or light burn adjustments yeah so what i'll do is i'll put the two videos at the end of my adjustments like i say this they both went into photoshop and got adjusted and then this one went to image r and this one went straight into light burn and I've done the adjustments from there so I'll just post the video at the end to show what adjustments I've made but yeah same speed and power air and everything yeah both look pretty good to me thanks for watching and please like and subscribe to help with the algorithm I just ordered some stuff so I'll be showing the outcome with that thanks again for watching I was going to use this picture so I've got this this one is differed already in image R and this one is just the edited image from Photoshop. So and you can see the difference between the two of them in there. So this one here, I'm going to have to do a little bit of adjustment I think. Because if I go over these and I preview it, you can see around this area, it's way too dark you can see with this one. So what I do is click on this image, then right click on it and go to adjust image. And now you can see that darkness over here on this one. I'll try and get rid of some of that. So I'm going to put the brightness up a little bit. I'm going to turn this up. It should bring some of it back and differ it a bit more. Yeah, you see. It brightened up a bit now. I'm gonna take away a little bit of gamma so that will help it brighten up a bit. Now let's zoom in. Most of it has gone. The rest is still looking good, so I'm gonna just try and bring a tiny bit more back. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna say okay. Oh, it does show the image mode is threshold. Let's see, diver. There you go. So the dog that needs the diver in, I've got 300 millimeters a second speed, 25 power. I'm going to put zero minimum power. Leave air assist off. I'm going to leave 260 dots per inch on diver. This is also 260 dots per inch, but it's been divvered on image R. So, let me just quickly turn this off a second. I don't know if this matters, but I'm going to make that 260. Turn pass through back on. Scan angle, I'm going to put back to zero, so it starts from the bottom. Everything else is correct. Okay, now I'll just quickly preview these two. They're looking quite similar, like that seems still a little bit dark on this one compared to the other one maybe I just brighten up the last little touch click off it click this one right click adjust image okay gonna turn the brightness up a little bit don't want to lose details elsewhere so that's looking a bit better so let me preview that 
Yeah, once you can, z once you zoom in, you can see there is gaps between. But let me bring them both up. You can see the main thing that I found is really you don't want too many big dark areas. I mean, like here, around the collar and stuff, should be fine. It's going to be a bit dark around there, but I mean that's all you got to do. Just zoom in and check and just see that there's no big dark patches because that's probably going to etch too much wood. Like this is pretty dark but it should be good, it's not too much of a bigger space, same as the eyes. Yeah, so I'm going to leave them two as they are like that. And I'm going to run them both, I'm going to have to do them separately because they're on different image modes. But yeah, I'll run one and then the other and see what the difference is. I mean they do look a bit different here, so okay so my photo editing process just because a lot of people ask about the photo editing i just wanted to show how i do mine um so first just go open the photo you want uh i'll just go with this front one i've actually already etched this but i can just show my process it's a nice clear photo okay i'm just going to zoom in a little bit uh first thing is if you want to remove the background which normally w works out better, especially for me here on a black background, is this selection tool. You can try select subject. I mean, if it's a good background, you know, it should cut it pretty well. And if not, select the mask, and you can do it that way to cut it out. <coughs> or really, the best way is learn the pen tool and do that but for this video to keep it shorter I'm just going to cut it out like this so that just control and C and control and V so it's pasted now with no background uh, there's a couple of ways that you can do this you could either uh, actually the first thing I like to do is duplicate this layer two times so now you've got three copies the top copy invert it vivid light and then filter, blur, Gaussian blur and as you add this blur it's going to start adding a bit of detail like you want to keep this just a sketch outline kind of like I'm going to go and you can always see and then take it away or lower it if not so I'm going to say ok there at 3.4 then I'm going to control and click the layer below so now they're both selected control and G to group them together then up the top here pass through is changed to now change that to overlay and you can see like if I zoom oh and you can see uh, like if I zoom in a bit more I'm gonna turn this off you see how that sharpens the image right up I mean you ain't gotta be done in Photoshop but this is the way I prefer to sharpen it up <coughs> uh, so then next now down here you can either you can go gradient map and it'll give you this and then if yours ain't black and white you just click on here just make sure this is black so you set that one to black click this one set it to white and then say ok and then here if you change this I like how linear comes out sometimes that gives you a nice classic is a little bit that's way too dark I mean that's coming back but linear is pretty good but just for now I'm going to get rid of this I just wanted to show this one way the other way that I like to do as well is go to the black and white adjustment layer and then that way you can adjust the colors yourself so or you know you can adjust the different some won't do nothing if that colors not in there you see a little bit on the chain there with that one which I'll actually take down to give myself a bit of an edge that one don't do anything last one no yeah it's mainly the reds and the yellows but from this you can really make sure you bring back what detail you want and now like that would be good to go to image R if you've got a couple like imperfections something you want to a good thing to do is add one more layer and then go to edit fill and then make sure you go to 50% grey change the blending mode to overlay say ok oh, 
down here, sorry, overlay. Now you've got this grey background, so all you have to do is hold control and click on this layer where your cutout is and it'll give you a cutout line. Then you can just click the mask and it'll mask that away. So now with this top layer you click back onto the grey side and you can use black to darken down some areas or white to brighten it up, I'll just show you. Uh, so you click on the brush tool you want to turn your flow, I'm going to put it all the way down to 1 you want to turn your hardness all the way down to 0 and then you'll see like if that in between his eyes was I mean this image as it is ain't too bad, this is a little bit bright, I'll see if I can darken it down a bit so you'll see as I rub over this it starts to bring back some detail, what wasn't there before same here, you can just see it adding a few dots back an image I will notice this same here if it was a bit dark you just press X to switch it from black to white so now I'm on white I can bring this back or I can go over his eyes make his eyes whiter pop out more yeah so you could just I mean you know depends how much you want to mess with it and if if you do it and it's too much uh, let me just turn this up just to show for an example if you do it, you know, like now you can see it's gone too much. You can actually, like, turn down the opacity as well. Or if it's on the whole layer too much, you can just turn down the opacity on the layer. And that'll take away some of the strength of it. So, you can see, I'll turn it off and on. I mean, that's terrible, but <laughs> you can see by adding that how you could you know change the parts of the photo you want so yep just a grey layer make sure it's on overlay and just use black and white I think dodge and burn is basically what it is uh, so yeah and now from there I would just file export you can save as a quick PNG normally uh, the better way I find is just to go to this one, go to PNG24, make sure it's transparent, it's ticked, and now it'll save it as a nice size. 